So to finish these up and add the frame, I was going to be sending them through the plane. And since these are end grain pieces, um, that just takes a long time. It's doable, but it does take a long time. So to cut down on some of that process, I used an angle grinder to remove the high spots. So it would be less time planing the boards. And um, the edges of this are going to be cut. So I didn't have to worry about snipe or tear out on the edges. So I didn't build a frame or anything around these because they were going to be trimmed down in the end and um, the burn marks on it are from the angle grinder and I just sent these through my plane. I kind of had to use a push stick because um, when you're doing end grain this this planer is a little bit underpowered for me at least when doing end grain planing so to get it through there I kind of had to use a stick at some point and it was almost too wide for the plane. So then this is what I am left with you could see most of the gaps are from the checking in the wood when it was drying over the process of it being cut. There wasn't a lot of gaps from what um, I used. So then I started ripping down some boards for the outer frames and if you watch the channel over the summer I made a maple um, entertainment center and I bought extra maple and had it I planed it all at once and that is what these bar boards are which was nice I was able just to cut them down without having to prepare any of the lumber so once I had all those pieces cut I went through and trimmed my boards so I would end up with squares um, it didn't really matter if these were all the same size they ended up being pretty close give or take maybe a quarter of an inch but um, the main the main goal was to get them into into a, uh, a shape with square corners. And then this is them all trimmed down. And once they were trimmed down, they really started to look nice at this point. I was happy, happy with the progress. So in order to get the edges, I had to, I glued this up in one big block. So these are the, gonna be the same thickness as the boards. And you'll see how I cut it up. I glued it up in one big block and then strategically cut it so that I would have enough for all of my pieces with the amount of lumber I had. Um, but also be able to plane this down in the planer because I glued it up, it, it glued up very nicely, but there's going to be some undulation in these pieces no matter really what you do. So I cleaned up as much of the glue as possible beforehand, put some panel clamps on tops and bottoms so that they, they don't really warp and let this set up overnight. The next day I could come in, take it out of clamps and start trimming it. So I'm going to be putting the edges on this in two parts, and that's just to get the, the best edge I can. On the back side, a great way to clean up glue is with a cabinet scraper. It takes most of the, the residual glue off very quickly. So I'm just evening up the one edge so I have a square edge. I'm doing that on my rain alarm saw. The throat of this comes out pretty far, so I could cut, cut it down both sides. Then I'm going to be trimming off this one section and this edge section is going to be for the first portion of the boards and then the big piece that I'm left with is going to be for the flat section across the top. With this as well I'm going to be trimming it in half and then I can send this through my planer. And as you can see, now the orientation of the boards is not going to be ideal, but these are going to be turned on edge. So if there's a little bit of tear out on this, it won't really matter for the end product. And like I said, it made life so much easier just being able to send these through the planer, which is why um, I, I planned it out and cut them the way I did. So I could send all these through and get them nice and clean. Once that was done, I could start cutting these into strips. So like I said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, trim out the, the two far edges. And I believe each edge ended up with three strips of this end grain maple to make it uh, just wide enough so it looked more practical as a cutting board. So I ended up with... Um, what's that 18 18 strips and I always cut one or two extra just in case you could see with the cross cut sled and a stop this is very easy work 
and I cut up those two sections I had. So besides potential cracks in the end grain, the other um, connection I was most nervous about is where I'm changing from the pattern of the wood to what I'm adding to it. Um, you might get some separation in the board now, uh, on the in the board there. Now, since they're both end grain, they should act somewhat similarly, but they're not the same wood and they're not the same thickness. So that was a little bit of a concern. So in order to beef up that joint, you could see I'm cutting a series of dados in the boards, as well as a series of dados in the first piece that's going to be connected. And then I'll add a very thick piece of about an inch by a half an inch uh, channel in there. And that, um, at least to me, should really sure up that joint and should help keep it in one solid piece over the years of use. You could see I'm adding just that that long um, piece in the middle and then gluing gluing the sides together and then gluing the other three pieces and I'm clamping these all together at once. So you could see I have three and three and then the other pieces that go on the outside are just but, um, butted up and, and glued like a regular a regular cutting board would be. And then I could clamp all three of these together let them set up overnight. I don't know if it makes it into the video, but I also put a clamp on the top of these as well. And you can't really tell, but I, I laid out the sides kind of like you would bricks so that they're, they're um, not all in the same plane so that you, the boards, so the seams and all of those jointed pieces on the edge, edges are off center. Um, it makes it look a little nicer, but also will make it a little stronger as well. So the next morning I could come in and, and take all of all of my marking tape off because I was marking which ones went where and then I could trim these down and this is why I did this in two sections. I could leave all of my pieces long, trim them down and then add the other section without having to worry about getting it all perfect the first time around. So now to add the two edge pieces, there's only going to be one and one on each side because it, it's already already big enough in that dimension. I didn't have to go super big in that dimension, but I'm also going to be adding that groove down the center and adding a piece inside to really sure up that joint on these. It's going to be the exact same process. You can see I'm going through. This also is nice because it will it will ensure that there's a nice joint going through um, all of the outer added end grain maple as well. So the logs it's are, are maple and the end grain pieces are maple as well. I told the customer that you can make the outer edges um, in walnut or cherry, which is also good cutting board materials, but they wanted the whole piece to be maple. So then with my last glued up slab, I can go through and cut my edges. This worked out perfectly. I cut six of them and then you'll see I'll put the groove through just like I did the first time around and then I could add, like I said, these were, each groove is about a half inch thick, so total an inch thick, and I think they're about a half inch, uh, inch wide, and then about a half inch thick, so that maple slat will go in inside. So I glued up one of these separately because it was taking a little bit longer to align all of the pieces, so to make sure the glue didn't set up before, I could glue all three, I clamped this one in place, switched to the other two, and then glued all three um, at once like I did similarly in the other video. You could see here's the other two glued up with that strip in the center holding the joint together and the two edges. So I could trim these down and then start final cleaning them up. Trimming them down was easy, you're just taking off those edges. So to clean these up, I'm going to be using a I'm going to be using a drum sander that I got in the spring. I haven't actually used it yet. When I got it, it needed some tweaking. And I did that tweaking, but it's still not running perfectly. This was definitely a time saver. Everyone I know that has one says that they're magical machines. And um, it was definitely a time saver, but I think it needs a little bit more work so that it's running a little bit better and it is more a little bit more of a time saver. If I didn't have that, I would have had to use just that, my handheld belt sander. So it definitely helped and left a, a fairly nice finish. So then to end this, I just chamfered all the edges on the board. 
Um, at this point, you could add whatever you want to it, like groove, juice screws or handles, little feet. Um, the customer specifically did not want any of that, so I didn't add any of it. I just chamfered the edges. To fill all the holes, I started with taking some sawdust and mixing it with glue into a peanut butter sort of consistency. This is a great paste um, wood filler. The sanding dust I'm using is the actual maple from when I was making the boards, so it's going to match perfectly. You can see I'm filling most of the big, big, big gaps I'll fill, and then this this paste will, will shrink a little as it dries, as the, the water evaporates out of the material, and it, so it will shrink a little bit, and then I'll go through and add a little bit more. At some point I did add some epoxy on the top because epoxy is nice and strong as well, and then I just sanded these down. Like I said, the the um, drum sander left a pretty nice finish, but it wasn't perfect, so I sanded it to about 220. Um, for the same customer, I also flattened part of the original tree stump, and that's what that was. I didn't film that because this was right before the holidays, and I was kind of rushed for time in general on all of my projects, but since it was part of this order and it turned out nicely, I wanted to film it. Um, the finish for this, I'm putting walrus oil on the finish, and it's an oil that also has some wax in it, like beeswax, which gives a nice finish to the entire board. Now I just apply this liberally and then um, make the client aware of the fact that they will also have to apply this as well. And then these are pretty much the finished boards. Um, I was happy with, with how they turned out. Like I said, I'm not super nervous these are going to crack and fall apart, but I did make the client aware of the fact that there could be some cracking, but they're local, and if that does happen, I could fix, fix anything for them. So this is just those finished boards. You could see a little bit better what I meant by the edges, um, the, the seams not being complete, completely aligned. They're a little off-center, which makes the joint stronger. And um, it was hard to get a good picture of these that didn't have a flash in it, but those are the finished boards.